Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm gonna jump into another one of my chopping block videos. I can't tell you how much fun these have been, like really, really, truly. But first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And I've had so many people subscribing in the past, I don't know, handful of weeks. I'm kind of like, what? Is this really my channel? So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't, you know, maybe give it a try. See if you like it. All right, so I'm going to start with, now I feel like I've already whittled down all of my primers to things that I know I like. This is one of them. I mean, I've used half of it. This is the No Pore Bloom Primer from Touch and Soul. But I'm just going to put some of this on today because... Maybe we don't need to show you the priming aspect anymore because I already know all of the primers I have, I still like. It's been a while since I've used this, but I remember absolutely loving this formula, even when I first bought it and it was too dark for me. This is the NARS Sheer Glow. I have the shade Gobi. Um, it's light three. So I'm just gonna put a pump on the back of my hand. I might need more than that, but I'm gonna start with this. Do you ever wonder about your choices? I do that every time I put foundation, like I dot it on my face like this, and then I put these videos up on the internet. <laughs> like, what, what am I thinking? This is not my best look. <laughs> but this is literally how I make sure I get a fairly even distribution of foundation. Just gonna pounce the rest of this in. I think one of the reasons I like to dot it on my face and then blend it is, if I don't, if I just pick it up straight from my hand with my sponge, um, it tends to really eat up a lot of product and I lose a lot of it to the sponge. Now, I'm not saying that your sponge picking up foundation is a good or a bad thing, it's just a thing. Sometimes with some foundations, I like that my sponge eats up some of it. And sometimes, I wish that it didn't. So to get a better distribution, I dot it on and then I pounce it in. But this looks more like a sane application of foundation than what I started out with. I just checked to see if Smashbox still makes this. This is the color correcting stick in the shade Look Less Tired Light. Um, I am going to give it a little bit of a sharpening here. I haven't used this in a long time, but I remember getting this, oh, it's been a long time now, years, because I was looking for a way to correct the circles right here under my eyes. I think it does a pretty good job. This is the lightest shade they make. I don't know that I want it everywhere, but I definitely want it here and right in the inner corner. I'm also gonna put a little bit, I, I always tend to have like a little dark spot right here on both eyes. And I just feel like that's come in in the last few years. I feel like this does a great job of really counterbalancing some of those darker bluey purpley tones especially like right here on the corners of my eyes. Is it perfect? No. If I were to put on like a massive coating of this and then concealer, could I get rid of it? Yes. But then I would look cakey and gross and dry under my eyes. So for me, I'm always walking that line. And for my skin not to look cakey and dry and out of control, I'm willing to put up with a little bit of darkness. But I do find that this helps. I'm gonna do it even though I know I'm not gonna like it. I'm gonna be using Tarte Shape Tape today. When this first came out years ago, and my under eyes were still, well, they were significantly younger than they are today. <laughs> they weren't as lined, they weren't as dry. This worked really well for me, just like it did for everybody else. But since the kind of birth of creamy, but full coverage and long wearing concealers, I just haven't looked back. It's time to decide whether I keep it or whether I let it go. Not excited about this. I should probably, I forgot that this dries fast. Gotta blend one side in before you leave the, oh my goodness. What shade is this? This is fair neutral. I'm, I'm wondering whether this was a good idea or not. The answer is no. <laughs> and the answer, well, my dark circle is pretty non-existent. Wow. Ooh really good at covering up my sunspots and it doesn't look bad there. Maybe for hyperpigmentation. It's already starting to crinkle in my under eye. I gotta set this. Oh, I'm worried. To set my under eye today, I'm gonna be using this. This is from Besame. This is their Brightening Vanilla Rose Powder. It's basically a pink powder. If you were to look at it in the container, it definitely has a very 
pink shift to it. Uh, but I'm gonna start by making sure there is nothing under here that's crinkled. And then I'm gonna put a little dusting of this here. I'm hoping that a little setting mist can revive the dry desert that is my under eye. And I don't know at this point if it's more setting powder or concealer or just the combo together was the nail in the coffin. <laughs> I don't know. But I will tell you it's very bright, isn't it? Like, oh, I guess you can still see them. But they're not as bad as normal. Normally I don't have to do this for you to see how dark my under eyes are. All right, so for the rest of my face, I'm gonna use the Rimmel Stay Matte. What's interesting about this is that it used to have like a little embossing. It almost had like, you can barely still see it. They're a little fleur de -lis. I never use this much of any powder. So the fact that I've used this much of this powder, well, it says that I, at one point, really liked it. I'm using the Too Faced Sweet Tea Bronzer for my look today, I haven't used this in months. I think the last time I used it was in the summer. It's a slightly shimmery bronzer, but as you see, I'm just like, more and more. Um, I'm gonna knock most of it off, but I always thought this gave such a pretty, glowy, natural, skin-like look to it. I know not everybody likes it. I really did. I was debating whether to use this for both bronzer and blush, but I've never been able to really use it well for bronzer because of the way it's laid out in the pan. But it's this, it's from Lancome. This is their Belle Detente. This is their Patio Mediterranean. And I think you'll see what I mean. So it has two blushes on the inside and a bronzer, and they're calling this a bronzer too. It's, I guess it's like a really light bronzy shade, but the bronzer in here, I've never been able to put a brush in there and keep it out of the blush. But the blush, normally I just swirl together like this. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I bought this because it was so pretty in the pan. <laughs> Don't ever buy makeup for that reason. I mean, I know you know that. I'm just putting it out there and I think more like I'm saying it out loud for myself. I think this was from two or three years ago, summertime. For highlight today, I'm gonna to be using the ColourPop in Nude Endo palette. I haven't used this in probably, I don't know, six months. This used to be my favorite highlight palette. I remember, I think the shades that are too dark for me are these four. Actually, no, these four. And I spent a lot of time in these guys here, but I have used them all kind of like um, bronzers, shadows, like there was one time I did use them as like a bronzer topper. It was a lot of glow, I'm not gonna lie. I remember being able to get rid of the first ColourPop six pan um, highlight palette after this came out, because I was like, why would I need that? But this is it's looking a little frosty. I'm gonna do something I normally don't do. I'm gonna do my brows next. I'm gonna be using the It Cosmetics Brow Power in their Universal Taupe Shade. I've had this for a long time, and I know there are a lot of people who think this is like the breast <laughs> the best brow pencil ever. And I was never a huge fan. It's been sitting in my drawer, so here's hoping it still works. I'm just gonna tell you, I think it's rather lazy. And I don't know whether they have more shades now, but when they first came out with this pencil, they came out with their universal taupe saying, if you go lightly, you'll get a lighter color. And if you go darker, you'll get a darker color, which is true. I mean, I learned that as a kid with crayons, but that still doesn't mean I can color my whole page red. You know, I want other shades. And I think that this is kind of a lazy approach. One shade will fit everybody, which you know it won't. Maybe one shade can be if you use it lighter in the front and a little bit more heavy in the back, but then multiple shades for multiple needs. It's not bad. I don't love it. I don't also like that it's uh, kind of oval. I know some people love that about it. I like a smaller, more precise pencil. I'm gonna put a little bit of the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel in there. I already know I like this gel. I already know I'm keeping this gel, but I feel like, as I clean off this, <laughs> the little brush in here, if I don't put something in there to kind of help, you know, keep it in place, these brows, although they've been filled in, I feel like they need a little something to kind of help cement them in place. So as I was thinking about what palettes to use, and I was going through my, I have two palette drawers. 
I know there could be a lot more, but the fact that I have two full to the brim of just eyeshadows means I have too much. And that doesn't count all of the, oh, you can't see it right behind the, well, right in front of the We Can Do It. Uh, you can see some over here. There are some palettes right behind me. There's a lot. I probably have about three drawers worth of eyeshadow. That's more than anybody should have. But I remember loving Juvia's Place. And this was the first palette I was ever excited about from Juvia's Place. This is just their Nubian palette. Being a very fair-skinned person, I see that there is not a kind of neutral cream shade in here. This one is the lightest shade there is, but it's a metallic, it's really pretty. But I don't know that I wanna put that all the way up close to my brow bone. So I'm gonna take this little single here. I found it the other day when I was cleaning out my eyeshadow drawer. This is from Wet n Wild, this is Creme Brulee. I remember hearing uh, Jessica Braun talk about this, Jam Beauty 89, about how she goes through these like nobody's business just to set her eyelid. And I was like, oh yes, please. It's really pretty, it's really pigmented, and I can take it all the way up to right underneath the brows. And I feel like I have a really nice blanked out space. And it's 99 cents. I don't know if it still is, but it was when I bought it. So there are no names on this palette. Um, no shade names uh, on the back or on the palette itself. So I'm just gonna point to what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start right here. I can tell that there are some shades in here that I've never tapped into, I've never used. That shouldn't happen. I'm gonna use uh, this shade right here. I'm gonna use that on the outer corner. You know what I've never done? I've never done a halo eye. Maybe we're gonna try a little bit of that today. So maybe a little bit of this here, a little bit of this on the, maybe I should use a smaller brush for this. On the inside, I'm gonna go for the darkest brown in here. And kind of lightly in small areas, tap it in on the inside and outer corner and then use a larger brush to blend. I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know where I got this great idea. You should do a halo eye. You've never done one of those. Do you ever have moments like that? And you have to be somewhere and look like yourself and not like a crazy person did your makeup? We're gonna keep going. To those who have blended before you, we salute you. I'm gonna use this shade right here, right in the center. Here's hoping. There's a lot of blending involved in this, and this is because I don't know what I'm doing. So I don't know that it's the shadow's fault. I think it's partly, I haven't used them in so long, I don't know what type of brushes work best with them. That's not too bad. Let's try to see if we can make this eye look like the other one. I will tell you this, never having done a halo eye, not really knowing what I'm supposed to be doing, I think I've made it more difficult for myself and I'm just continuing to, I don't know that I'm improving it, I'm just, I'm still going. I'm still going because I'm unsure. You ever do that? More will help. I've never done this before, but let's do more. The one thing I'll tell you is that when I get eyeshadow this low, I try and keep it really light, like a light shade, but I feel like it, uh, first of all, completes the eye look, but it also helps to hide my really dry under eyes. I don't know that it does, but I feel like it does. I don't know that more eyeshadow is gonna help what I'm feeling like is a completely failed eye look. I don't know. So I'm gonna curl my lashes and then I'm gonna put on some liner. So I have three of the ColourPop Cream Gel Colors. Um, one is the Kathleen Lights uh, collab called Mr. Bing. This is much more of a warm toned brown. Could definitely work today. My all time favorite, they don't make this anymore so I've been reviving it with Duraline, is this one. This one's called Stomper. Oh, I love that one so much. I think I'm gonna try the Mr. Bing today. I'm gonna pick up a little bit here on this push liner brush, this Wayne Goss push liner brush, which I love because it's so baby tiny. It's like the best thing ever. And I'm just gonna shove this right up here in my upper waterline. Oh, I already feel like it makes such a big difference. I'm gonna put the Makeup Geek Full Color Spectrum, is that what it's called? No, it's Full Spectrum Eyeliner in Nude in my lower waterline. I've had this one for a long time and I love how creamy it is. But it doesn't last as long as I would want it to. I wanna try something I've never tried before. It's a sample 
from Laura Mercier. This is the Caviar Volume Mascara. It's a little teeny tiny tube. I've had it in my mascara jar for a while. Let's see. What does it say it's going to do? It's going to give us 90% more intense volume and a full panoramic effect. So it's volume. Wouldn't mind a little length with that volume, but we'll see what we get. Oh, it's a really big brush and it kind of goes in a little spiral. Let's see what we get. I mean, just on first application, it's nice. There's a lot of volume with this mascara. I'm getting some decent length too. Oh, I don't hate that at all. <laughs> I'm trying to decide what type of lip product to put on today and I, no, no, maybe this. This is the uh, Too Faced, what are you? Creamy Peach Oil Lip Gloss in the shade Papa Don't Peach. Should have put down lipstick first, then gloss, but I'm gonna throw on a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury's Bond Girl. I was actually really impressed and have re-fallen back in love with the sheer glow from NARS. This is a beautiful foundation, and it's very much a light medium uh, to maybe medium if you were able to build it up a little bit sort of foundation that gives you just enough And this used to be my go-to before the Charlotte Tilbury light wonder. I love the light wonder But I could see how this can be exactly what you're looking for if you don't need a lot of coverage Or you don't like a lot of coverage. You just want your skin to be Slightly perfected. It looks like skin. It sits beautifully on the skin. I always make sure that I'm well hydrated I don't always use a primer, but I did today and that foundation is just gorgeous. Now, I don't know if this Smashbox pencil really worked. I'm gonna keep using it. I'm gonna leave it like right here on my tabletop so that I can remember to use it because if it, it's what really made the difference here for me. More of that, please. I was worried about this. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I've been putting it off and I, there's only one other concealer that I still have yet to retest. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna bite the bullet, I'm gonna do the shape tape because I know I'm not gonna like it, I'm gonna be able to declutter it, but the truth is I think I'm gonna keep it. Not for my under eyes, because my under eyes look like a desert. I mean, they are as dry as anything, as they've ever been, and they don't look good, but you can just barely faintly see this hyperpigmentation spot right here. Like, and, and from a distance, I don't feel like it's very visible. And so I feel like I have a couple of spots right here, a little bit of melasma that came up this summer um, from a lot of sun, even though I was wearing a ton of SPF. I think I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna leave it like the Smashbox right here on my table in front of me just to remind me to use it for like little places like this because it's remarkable. I love it for that. So that surprised me. I still do like the Rimmel Stay Matte. I think this is more of a summer powder for me. I think that using it this time of year is definitely only on days where I would really want my foundation to stay in place and not do anything or go anywhere because it looks good. And I think that for the price, it's a really beautiful product. I mean, it's like what, five, six dollars. It's so, so reasonably priced and it performs so well. Now, on the other hand, this is too dry under my eyes and I bought this specifically to go under my eyes. So this is going to be one of the things that I let go for sure. I still really like this, even though I'm a little hog wild today, I put on a little too much. This on the other hand, uh, I'm not wanting to hang on to it because it's a beautiful color. It's not a bad color. I mean, like the blush is beautiful. I think I'm gonna have to let it go. And it's so hard because I paid 50 bucks for this, $50. And I've never been able to successfully use it. And it's nice, but the layout of the pans, it would have made more sense to me. And I know it makes a pretty mosaic here because you have, I don't know if you can tell, you have two shades of bronzer and two shades of blush. It would have made a lot more sense to me had they split the pans, you know, like this or like small little, I don't know. It's so hard to get your brush exactly where you want I just can't make sense of it. So this is gonna go. So I'm having a hard time letting this go, partly because I love ColourPop and I feel like ColourPop does so many things well and it is a really pretty highlight. I will tell you though, 
between this, they I don't know if they still make it, but they used to have a different six pan pressed highlight palette, their first one. I had that one and I loved it until this one came along. And then this one came along and it totally dethroned the other, so I got rid of that. And now I feel like I don't have to keep this either because there's enough colors in here that don't work for me and it didn't give me the sort of glow I really love. Um, and I think it wasn't the products themselves, it was the shade selection. These are all swatched right here. I feel like enough of them are so dark and the ones that aren't too dark are a little too icy. I don't know, and maybe this was, you know, the best in ColourPop highlighters two years ago. I think I, I can let it go. One thing that really has to go is this. I love Makeup Geek. I love Marlene Estelle, and I love that she's relaunching her liners. This one here, I always loved the tone of it. It was like the perfect nude shade for me. It's a little bit lighter. The Honey Dude from ColourPop is a little bit darker. I prefer the shade of the other, but it doesn't really stay on my waterline. So I need something that's gonna last a little bit longer, hence the ColourPop. I'm also going to let go of the Universal Brow Power in taupe because um, there are better pencils out there at the drugstore. You don't have to pay 20, whatever that is. I forgot I had this little gem. I, there are certain things I'm starting to leave like right here on my countertop in front of me that I would be using every day, like the Tatcha Pearl. I have a Laneige lip sleeping mask here. I have my pencil sharpener. And now, you know, things that I'm adding to mine in case you need them on a daily basis, my two concealers and this little guy here because I can really see myself reaching for that for blending purposes. I feel like my eye look would have been a lot more cuckoo crazy had I not used some of that to like blend the edges out. So when I'm thinking about this as a palette, a couple of things jump out at me. First of all, these five shades here, one, two, three, four, five, I've never dipped into. So I think that's a travesty. I need to try it again. Um, and you can tell a lot of heavy use up and through here because these are the shades I'm most comfortable with. This here is the first time I've ever used it on the lid. Normally I only use it as a liner. So there's this, this palette is just like my row of comforts and my use them but I'm, I'm liking that I'm stepping outside of that now the idea of a halo eye is awesome and cool but obviously I didn't really execute it well today so I want to try it again not with this palette but just the whole idea of a halo eye maybe watch some tutorials figure out what I'm doing because I'm not a makeup artist I'm just your friendly neighborhood makeup lady <laughs> I love makeup so much but I don't always know exactly how to make it work and I like trying new things so I definitely want to try the deeper colors in here. I think they're gorgeous. And I really want to push myself to use darker, more intense colors regularly. And maybe watch a tutorial on how to do a halo eye because it's not the worst eye look I've ever done, but I'm definitely not excited to be like, look what I did today, isn't it great? No, I don't feel that way. Um, this mascara, if it wears well, oh, hello. Because I really feel like this might give my Monsieur Big from Lancome a run for its money. Now, I hate falling in love with high-end mascaras because they are usually so expensive. It's probably going to be in the 20, mid-20s, upper $20 range, and I don't want to fall in love with another one of those. But it really gave me a nice, fluffy look to the lashes. It gave them length but a lot of volume. I really like this mascara. So here's hoping it doesn't flake, doesn't smudge. Um, and if it does, it doesn't matter because it's a little teeny tiny sample and we can just go like, you are not for my eyes. I don't know if I've already told you, I've already finished my lipstick declutter, so I'm not decluttering either of these shades, but I will tell you, having gone through the whole process, it's so much easier to know what I have as well as to know what's going to look good with whatever it is I'm doing because I have my go-tos right in front of me and then over here where I have the rest of my lipsticks, they're so finely curated, I know what there is. I don't feel like I'm kind of pawing through a, like, what am I gonna find? I don't know. Um, but I definitely feel like a little squirrel who has, you know, hit all the nuts for winter and I know exactly where my stash is and exactly how many nuts there are. I feel like I know, I know my lipsticks again and I have more than I should have, but I really feel good about where I'm at with those. I can tell that out of everything, these guys here are the least used out of everything I pulled today because I have used a lot of this stuff as recently as early fall, late summer. And these guys, I probably, the ones that I'm getting rid of, I probably haven't reached for in eight to 12 months. 
So it's very safe to say these guys are definitely getting rid of. I'm surprised this is sticking around, but I need to repurpose how I use it. And I think that'll make me happy because not having this like glaring at me makes me really happy. All right, so thank you for watching today. Let me know if you have too many of one thing. I might have to do a video pulling out all of my neutral palettes. I might, I might just have to do it. I don't wanna declutter eyeshadows. Eyeshadows make me really happy. But I might need to see that I need to stop with the neutral eyeshadows. <laughs> I would love to know if there's anything, it doesn't have to be makeup, that you have too much of. Um, I have too many serving dishes. I have too many glasses. <laughs> I have too many shoes. I have too many nail polishes. Um, and sometimes I wonder if I have too many pets, but my cat and my dog I love them so much. I also feel like I have too many books, but then there's part of me that goes, there's no such thing as too many books or too much music. I'm talking sheet music. I've got a lot of sheet music. So anyway, um, I would love to know what you have excessive amounts of and whether you've just embraced it and said, yep, that's me. I love it. I'm keeping it. Or whether it's like, maybe it's time to let some of this go. I'd be really interested to know. Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything specific you're curious about or um, a video that you'd like me to make or that thing that you got too much of. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.